Welcome to You in HD, your identity in higher definition with Pastor Eric Miller. Join us in our journey of faith in God by taking an in-depth look into the Bible's authority and sufficiency to guide us in our Christian walk. Discover your identity in Jesus Christ today. We got to talk about forward aggressiveness. We got to talk about the truth. We got to talk about all that is happening today. We got to talk about why on earth, as Christians, that are we so afraid of stepping on toes? Why are you so terrified of angering people who have no problem stepping on God's toes, slandering our Lord Jesus Christ, vandalizing our Bible? adding New Age and pagan belief systems into our, and, and trying to make it sound Christian, and, and, and nobody wants to say anything to these people. In a social media group, the guy had the nerve, this man had the nerve to say, look, I agree with you, Pastor Eric, that, 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 that false prosperity gospel is wrong. And he literally in his little personal you know, belief system on why he knows it's wrong. But what it doesn't add in is, of course, what happens afterwards, what he says that really caps, you know, opens this door up. Though you're right, Pastor Eric, I don't like, this, this, this community's rules state that we can't attack another's belief system. And we don't want to cause conflict, even though he knows that the, 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 what this person is saying is wrong. It will lead someone to destruction. It will derail them and create a problem in their life. But he doesn't want to create a problem. He doesn't want to upset those with this belief system because he doesn't want to cause concern for them. Why on earth are you telling and, and allowing and enabling wrong beliefs to be part of a community that you're telling me that is self-professed Christian and you don't have the courage to stand up and actually stand on the gospel? That is called cowardice. That is a coward, unwilling to stand up and fight for what's right. Unwilling to stand up and fight for one's rights. The right that God gave you to speak and preach the truth of salvation in Jesus Christ. And this coward, I don't want to upset the sensibilities of these others who believe this wrong doctrine. Wouldn't he be more concerned about those who bought in and he believes that that doctrine is wrong, but he doesn't want to upset them but doesn't mind upsetting those who are offended by this stuff. Or what about those who might start believing it because people endorse bad behavior? Just as guilty as a perpetrator of false doctrine. Just as guilty. My sister in Christ, Sister Curtis, sent something across social media. Powerful. I want to read it to you. It says, Christians being so quiet because they're scared to be persecuted, you will never bring someone to Christ sitting on your hands and living like the world. We are called to be like Christ, not like, like, Christ, not like other Christians. I hope I get under your skin because that is the first sign of conviction. I will serve God till I die, giving him all the glory. If you forget my name, just remember my Jesus. Woo, that's powerful, amen. If there is that if there is no one out in the world preaching, then how will people know who their creator is? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. All my sisters and brothers in Christ, it is time to make some noise. Wake up the world. Isn't that powerful? Here she is willing to stand up and fight. And as she wrote this, it's only got 17 likes, four comments. But if you up, scroll up and down, you'll see God is good. If God has done something good in your life, type an amen and share. Uh, God is going to send you a financial uh, 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 blessing this week. Uh, hold on to your faith. God is going to deliver a breakthrough. All chains are going to be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. All of them got 80 to 90 plus likes. But my sister tells the truth in what needs to happen in the world. Now, I'm not saying God ain't doing all those other things. But you notice they're focused on those hot button things. You know, so you'll probably realize you got like 15 Bible quotes that are constantly 
ro rotated constant, and that's fine. But that's all that they're saying. They're not adding anything else to the plate. It's always bacon and eggs, bacon and eggs, bacon and eggs. There are 66 books in the Bible, and I'm sure the Holy Spirit has not run out of things to talk about through 66 beautiful, great books. The problem is there's no boldness in them because they're not allowing that boldness to shape their character. You cannot speak the truth when you're living in, in, in the sham that you don't want to offend nobody's sensibilities. You don't want to ruffle no feathers. You don't want to rattle a cage. You don't want to upset your, your, your family members who may be, they may be gay or they may be uh, addicted to drugs and they may be out you know, womanizing and, and doing everything you can think of, every sin imaginable, and they are satisfied with it. They could be atheists. They can be uh, Wiccans. They can be all kind of alternate cults, and, but they just don't want to offend them. They could be Muslims. They could be Mormons. and They just don't want to offend them by us saying the truth of Jesus Christ there's only one way to God, and that is through Jesus. I don't want to offend nobody. I want them to find their own way to their own idea. Of it. I mean, just all kind of nonsense. You know what they're called? Cowards. Yes, I'm saying it. Cowards. Why such a strong word? Why, why not just say maybe they're shy, or maybe God is not leading them to speak boldly? There is not a preacher, teacher in our Bible that has not put and they risk their life to preach the truth in the midst of people telling Christians, be quiet. Nobody wants to talk to you. You see on TV now the, the, the nice uh, packaged attacks against Jesus Christ. You got modern family. You got this new show, The O'Neills, and, and making fun of Christians. You got Family Guy, American Dad. You got uh, South Park, you got anything from Seth MacFarlane, you just, anything that they can to make fun of the Lord, and it's so comical, it's great, it's funny, and, and it's just, it's so great. They want to make us the laughing stock of the world. Why? Why are Muslims cutting heads off of Christians? Mormons are safe. Why are cults safe from them? But we are on the chopping block. But only people that are only Christians on the chopping block are those who are willing to be persecuted. Like my sister said, Christians being so quiet because they're scared to be persecuted. Cowards. You don't want to tell your brother and sister that they're living in sin because of cowardice. You are more afraid of offending them, but you're not afraid for their soul going to hell. Your priorities are mixed up. Your priorities are backwards and twisted. You're not listening to God anymore. You're listening to some kind of sensitivity of the world. You're worried about microaggressions when you should be worried about hell's aggressive attack against your brothers and sisters. You're worried about offending people with your tone, but you're not afraid of them listening to the devil's tone when he's telling them, keep continuing in your sin and I'll keep rewarding you with this world. You are so concerned about getting your feelings hurt, but you ain't worried about your brothers and sisters getting their soul ripped out of them and going to hell. Your priorities are mixed up. You're so worried about not offending the pastor, but you're not worried about offending God. Your priorities are mixed up. You're not you're going to diversity training at your job, but you're not going but you're not renouncing and saying, Look, I can't participate in that because it is against what my Lord and Christ and Jesus says you cannot participate in. But your priorities are in the wrong place for that. You figured out that you can't speak the truth at your job because it's more important that you earn a living than you earn your way into, into God's graces and his love by rescuing someone from the fire because your priorities have messed up. You're so worried about your reputation that you're not worried about Jesus Christ's reputation. Your priorities are mixed up. You're worried about trying to be a good representative of your job or your family or whatever perception people have of you, but you have forgotten you're an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Your priorities are mixed up. Your priorities are mixed up. When you place more emphasis on not trying to hurt someone's feelings, but you don't really care about where their soul ends up, that's a concern for me brothers and sisters. That's a concern. It should worry you that someone is not doing their job right now. There is somebody
that is allowing the enemy to take another light from heaven because someone is not doing their job. They're not trying to get under the skin and be the wretched filth of the world which Christians were back then versus the new modern Christian that got the suits and the nice cars and the nice homes and you can't find a poor person around them. They're the ones that basically mightily saying, you ain't sick, just denounce your sickness and they still sick on Monday. They're the same Christians who are saying, I don't claim illness, I claim financial success and health and wellness while they still broke. You, you, you see all this mess. A brother comes to you and say, I'm living in sin, and, and I, I still think God loves me, and I don't think I'm going to go to hell if I keep doing my sins. And you're sitting right along and saying, well, if you're saved and you love Jesus, you're going to be fine. There's no, if there's no conviction in his heart, and there's nothing that, that, that makes him want to repent, there's a problem. There's a problem there, and you don't want to deal with it. That's called cowardice. Let's read boldness. Now, the definition of boldness, by I looked this up through WordWeb, which is a free app. I think it's a free app in the App Store, and I think it's also an Android store. A little shout-out plug for them because I use them a lot. Boldness, the trait of willing to undertake things that involve risk or danger. Now, some other things I pulled around the web to kind of pull it all together is forward aggressiveness and audacity, which you know, breaks down to fearless daring. That goes into Ephesians 6, 18, 2, 20. My, I'm reading out of the Holman Christian Standard, but your Bible should read very similar. But let's go ahead and read. This is, remember, Ephesians 6, 18 through 20. Pray also for me that the message may be given to me when I open my mouth to make known with boldness, let's underline that, the mystery of the gospel. For this I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I might be bold enough, underline bold again, enough in him to speak as I should. Let's examine boldness and bold, and let's add them words in there, like the Amplified Bible does so eloquently. So let's read, pray also for me, for the message was given to me to open my mouth. Actually, I read 19 and 20. I'm sorry, not 18 and 20, 19 and 20. So open my mouth to make known with boldness, to basically involve myself in risk and danger with forward aggressiveness, with audacity and fearless daring to speak to the mystery of the gospel. For this I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I might be bold or pray that I might be willing to undertake and involve myself in risk and danger and forward aggressiveness and audacity, a fearless daring in him to speak as I should. Look at that. Pray that I might be bold enough in him to speak as I I should. Was Jesus Christ afraid to speak the truth if it hurt someone's feelings? No, sir, no, ma'am. And he says boldness in him, which means he's not relying on his personal strength. He's relying on Christ's strength. He's relying on his faith in Christ to give him the boldness to speak the truth. Paul's priorities was in the right place. So we got an answer. How do I, Pastor Eric, speak with boldness? You speak in him. How do I tell someone that they're living in sin and the reason their struggles in life is happening this way is because they're sinners? By, by having boldness in Christ. Christ gave you his strength. Famous Bible quote. What is it? I can do all things with Christ that strengthens me. Why are you not using his strength, his boldness? When you believe you can't and don't you feel the, the, that, that, that fear that you should not have, but you're human, you're going to feel out of your comfort zone to confront someone because you know they're going to get upset with what you've got to say. But I would rather upset them than have them comfortable in the devil's arms. I just would. I'm sorry. I, I'm not going to apologize for that because it is a fact. I'd rather someone hate me for the truth than to hate me because they think I should have told them the truth when something went to hit the fan. If anybody been in a job and a raise of hands would be great, did you get in trouble for something that no one ever told you about? But then you hear someone say, yeah, I saw you doing it, man, and I saw that you were doing it wrong, but you know what? I don't say that. I don't get involved in stuff like that, so I was just hoping that maybe you would have caught on that you were doing it wrong or you would have asked me. 
I, I'm sure somebody went through that in, in their life, in, the, in, in their job, or in anything they're doing in life. You're like, man, how come you didn't warn me? You're supposed to care about me, man. Why would you let me go through that? That is no different than allowing someone that you know and love that if they're going to go to hell for their sins, then they should be stumbling over you to get there. You should be trying to throw yourself the best you can. So when they try to go through that road to hell, then you're going to be, they're going to be stumbling over you to get it. Now, I ain't saying chasing after them. Lord did say get out of the way of a person chasing after sin. Now, that's a different story. But I am telling you, they should have to leapfrog over you. They should have to stumble. You, you should put some kind of, kind of, kind of hard... J.J. Watt tackle on somebody and try to get them behind the backfield so you can say, look, man, you've got to take a look at your life. you got to put some hands on somebody, some spiritual hands on them. I ain't talking about physically restraining. I'm talking about you got to put, remember, spiritual warfare, we don't fight with the flesh but with spirit. We are attacking that thing that is driving them to hell. We want to get them, we want to get into their spirit. We want to get into their souls and say, look, the Lord Jesus can save you from the road that you are traveling, which is so wide, you they can't even see the size of that thing. They're shoulder to shoulder, comfortably, with every other sinner out there, heading to the road of hell. If we don't try to get them off that road, we ain't doing our job. We've been given a very great commission. That's a great commission. It's great, it's beautiful, it's massive, it's powerful, and it's done one-on-one. One-on-one, -on -one, the battle is done in the trenches, and where God has placed you is where you do your missionary work, at your job, at your cubicle, in your car, at your favorite restaurant, at your favorite ball game, at your favorite whatever social event that you attend, at your church. You can missionary in your church. Someone in your church right now does not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That is a fact. Someone in your church has not, is not saved and has, doesn't even understand what it means to be saved, may be afraid to give their life to Christ because they've been let down by everything that they put their faith in. You have not understood there are people in church right now that you see every Sunday that are not saved, that it's missionary work. There's neighbors across the street that are not saved. There are family members in your family that are not saved. There are friends that, that are not saved, co-workers that are not saved, people that you're running at the line at the grocery store that are not saved. They, when a person sees Jesus in you, they will ask and talk to you about the craziest of things because they see the beauty of Christ in you. Why on earth would that be the time that you cower down so you don't want to offend them by saying, well, I, I study Buddhism. What about you? I am a Christian, a child of the Most High. That's says, high and lifted up. Jesus Christ is my Savior. I, have been, I am a convicted sinner, but I have been set free of the bonds because of Jesus Christ's sacrifice, and you too can be saved. When did we get so afraid to tell that evangelistic, powerful message? When did we forget the boldness in Christ is in us? When did we get our priorities so twisted that we're afraid of offending people but not offending God? When did boldness become a problem? When did a Christian's voice needs to be his, the tone needs to change for us to reach people? Let me tell you something. The volume needs to go up. Stay the course. I don't care, brothers and sisters, how many people tell you to change your tone because it offends them. Let it. I don't care what people tell you when you're talking about rhetoric. No, 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 look. If, if it's the gospel truth, if it has salvation, and it is with salt, and trust me, salt makes everything taste better. Yes, it does. I don't care. Well, your voice should have salt in it. Last time I checked, salt has a bitterness to it, but it brings out flavor of something. The truth doesn't hurt anybody. When they say, oh, the truth hurts, let me tell you the truth. The truth opens up wounds to, so it can heal the right way. It's re-breaking a bone to set it the right way. Your priorities. Is to mend broken things. 
And sometimes you got to re-break it because it was set wrong. Isn't that kind of what the Lord Jesus do every day? Our priorities were wrong. He sets them right. And every time we try to reset those priorities back to the things that's going to keep us in a condemned mindset that keeps condemning all of our actions and keeps us repenting every day over the same issues because we have not placed all of our faith in God. We've not placed our, our character in his hands so we can start shaping the things that are doing the most profound damage to us. We never get out of the blocks. We never be able to experience that boldness because we're too busy experiencing that same sin that, and I'm not saying that, look, look, I'm not trying to say you're not going to struggle with certain sins for the rest of your life. I'm not saying that. But if you're not making an attempt to continue to bring that to God so he can shape and mold you, there are other things in your character that, he can, that he's reshaping. Even with that problem going on, he's reshaping other areas in your life that are victories, and you're not even talking about those things to other people because you're concerned about these, these, the, the, your priorities are so twisted, you're not concentrating on the things that God has done for you, which is part of your testimony, which gives you boldness, because that boldness is in Christ, because he's the one that frees you from that, but you're not talking about that. Because, one, you're worrying about the wrong reputation. I don't want to tell nobody that I used to be a prostitute, that I used to sell my body for, for money and cash and, and, for, and, for, and, for, and for drugs. Why are you ashamed? Jesus wasn't ashamed when he came and pulled you out that gun. Why are you ashamed of him? Your testimony is no longer you. It is where you came from. It is not what you are. It's where you came from, delivered from. The chains are broken from. You are no longer part of that life from. You are free from that. You are free free, but you don't have any boldness because somewhere in there you're still living in that prison, worried about other priorities when you should be worried about the priorities of God. Put your mind on heavenly things and you will be free. You will taste a boldness that you, will, you cannot be able to change down. You will not be able to keep your mouth closed when you have placed your faith fullness in delivering the truth of the gospel. Not some twisted, vandalized version that's watered down so great that you try to call it tea and somebody else calls it tea water because there's no, there's no taste of tea in it. There's no flavor whatsoever so it doesn't offend nobody. The food is so bland you have to put so much salt on it that it dehydrates you until you deplete yourself. You can't live bold in Christ when you're too busy worrying about other people's sensibilities. Their sensibilities is where a lot of their sin has comforted. You've got to think like Christ, and you have the mind of Christ living in you, but as long as your priorities are twisted and you're worried about upsetting somebody, you should be more upset about upsetting God for bringing tears to him because he's asked you to save others like he saved you. Is it not worth your time and effort to sacrifice your reputation or perception of a reputation from someone else's idea to doing what God asked you to do? That should be priority number one. I want to thank you for listening today. Thank you, Sister Curtis, for all that you've done. Thank you for all those who speak boldly in Jesus Christ, all of those who have been called every name in the book because you are, are, are unwilling and uncompromising telling the truth about Jesus Christ, I salute you. I love you very much, and my prayers go to you. And for those who, are, who, who doesn't feel that they can share the gospel because they don't feel that they can articulate the word of God well, let me tell you something. Don't carry that, sh that, that, that fear that you won't speak the right things. Trust in God. Have faith in God. Let's read that, that passage again, and this gives you, hopefully this gives you some meat and, and some truth. Pray also for me that the message be given to me when I open my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. For this I am an ambassador in chains. This is what I want you to take with you, brothers and sisters. This is what I want you to do when you feel the, 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 the urging of the Holy Spirit to speak about Jesus Christ and let him guide your questions and how you respond. Look at this last verse. Pray that I might be bold enough in him to speak as I should. Since Pastor Eric, I love you all so dearly. Continue to help support this ministry. You can find us on uh, Facebook, 
Uh, you can look it up in UNHD. Of course, iHeartRadio and iTunes. All you got to do is look for um, the UNHD. Of course, it's on there. Uh, Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, dot com forward slash Y-O-U-N-I-H-D. You can reach me on any one of those websites and, and be able to reach out to me personally, of course. I love you very much, saints. Keep the fight. Know that I love you. Know that I'm praying for you as you pray for me in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You have just listened to You in HD, your identity in Jesus Christ with Pastor Eric Miller. This ministry is made possible by your thoughtful prayers and donations. Join us each week as we continue to explore our Christian identity in Jesus Christ. May God richly bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.